As you're probably aware if you stumble across this corner of the internet that I am a fan of the Zelda-like. It's a long trend of games that I really started to take notice in 2017, where a lot of smaller indies at that E3 had clearly taken a few notes from Miyamoto and Class to create a lot of really fantastic games that feel like the adventures of our favorite green tunicked hero. 2021 had a lot to offer and a bunch more in my backlog, so here I wanted to show a few that I enjoyed. The first one is easily my favorite game name of the year, with Turnip Boy Commits Tax Evasion. That ridiculous name tells you everything you need to know about its tone and sense of humor, meshing together high fantasy video game characters against a high organization that even strikes a wave of fear into the Joker. I'm crazy enough to take on Batman, but the IRS, no thank you. The adventure is pretty standard Zelda fare with an overhead view that grants Turnip Boy more abilities, unlocking new areas with a very meme-friendly sense of humor. The main adventure, though, is pretty short, taking only about three hours to beat. I can certainly appreciate the brevity of that, but there is an additional mode for free that adds a little bit of content. It's one I really want to revisit and dive deeper into, but for now, I'll say it's a solid Zelda tribute that's worth a look-see. Another major Zelda-like that you might have heard about is also Death's Door, which has gotten a lot of love to it. As the nerves follow up to Titan Souls, which itself has a little bit of Hyrule in its blood, it didn't quite make my main list, but I totally get why it's earned such a cult status. It's an inventive world that starts with your main hero being a Crow Grim Reaper. Their job is to go in the real world and capture new souls to bring into the Great Unknown. In the game, a soul they captured gets stolen from them, and because of the world's rules, they're stuck in purgatory for all eternity until they get them back. Hayao Miyazaki is cited by the team as being a large inspiration, and it's very clear to see, especially with the witch character, which playing through the game, we discover their tragic arc. Combat will feel right at home for any fan of Hyper Light Drifter, involving adapting to a strict understanding of its hit detection, the dodge rolls you'll be performing, and your long-range weapons. For me, it's a little bit too strict on that. The controls are about 90% there, and some of the baddies are inconsistent to the point where I can't judge the hit detection or get the timing just right. It felt not entirely there. The good news is that you're not just stuck to face that death screen for all eternity, as there are plenty of ways to beef yourself up and make harder sections much more manageable. I would cautiously recommend Death Store, as it might be a little bit too tough for people's tastes, and I'd like to save my full thoughts for this adventure for another day. I will say though that Death Store is a mountain to climb, and it felt damn good and rewarding to see its summit. Besides Death Store, however, for the main spot on my list, there were two major ones from last year that really captured my imagination. The first is Unsighted, which unfortunately got well-known with the fact that it wasn't well-known at the beginning, but that's another story altogether. It combines a lot of familiar tropes, like a crafting system, dungeons with puzzles to solve, a Metroidvania-style map, a variety of support characters, and a top-down view utilizing a cross between twin-stick shooter for projectiles and Hyperlight Drifter's intense swordplay. But the main unique mechanic is what gave the game its ultimate weight. You have the option to play the game where all of your friends, including yourself, have a time limit. If you take too long in your adventure, or can't find enough resources to help sustain the lives of your associates, then they're dead, including yourself. No convenient game saves before then, no Phoenix Downs, no unsnapping with the Infinity Stones, no do-overs, they are gone for good. This adds so much weight to all of your decisions going forward. And that precious dust supply is also for yourself, which really makes it more imperative to get good at your actions or get smart and selective with your rations. The second Zelda like that really struck with me is Shikori, A Colorful Tale. It's basically Zelda if the heroes of time were all artists that can add color to the world and use it to navigate dungeons and stop monsters. You're a brand new creator, and the journey has you not only painting and doing the usual Zelda formula, but also becoming an artist yourself. And that's not just limited to the main character, but for you, the player. The game has a really playful nature where you can basically color anything in the world. That's including the menus, the map screen, and even some of the clothes that you wear in your journey. The story is also very well written, and it takes time not only to celebrate art, but to examine the toxicity that artists go through. It's both an internal and external struggle that finds really inventive ways of expressing that. And between these two games that are wholly unique in how they tell stories, the weight you feel for your characters, and how they add something unique to the Zelda formula, and still found a great unique identity made it really hard for me to pick between the two, so why not both? Yep. I'm cheating a little bit, but Chikori and Unsighted are some of the brightest spots in the indie realm from last year. 
If you do have a choice between the two, I'd recommend Chikori for younger audiences, as it's a bit easier to play, and actually has a great reason for being as easy, with the idea that art should be as accessible to everyone. And Unsighted I would recommend for more experienced players, but the game does have great options for difficulty, including the option to not play with the time limit, and to just enjoy the game on its own. And trust me, I have a lot more to say about both of these games, and this channel's not done with them yet. And this channel's not done with 2021 yet. Only two games left in my recollection of my favorites from last year. The one for next time will surprise absolutely no one and is great enough to talk about again. Feel free to subscribe and be notified upon its release. Mm -hmm.